So let's talk about being a Christian and living in a society that has different cultures and norms and basically figuring out how to not do the things that culturally acceptable um, and how to kind of like break out of little habits you've had maybe from before you became a Christian. Today's video is all about Christianity versus culture. Let's get right into it. Now, if you ask any Christian around you, they will let you know that being a Christian is not the easiest thing in the world. And this is particularly because the entire walk and meaning behind of Christianity, apart from accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, is completely changing the way in which you were grown, if you weren't grown as a Christian, and just what society considers as acceptable um, so that you can actually accept and live according to how God says you're supposed to live in the Bible. A popular scripture that we have heard time and time again is Romans chapter 12 where it says God is saying do not be conformed to this world but do what I say to do so that you can be pure and holy. But this is not entirely the easiest thing to do. Why you may ask? Because some of us did not grow up as a Christian, myself included. I never grew up as one that was taught, okay, constantly go to church, constantly do this. Not until I was around like 16 year old that um, I moved into that whole space of learning about God and actually accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I grew up in culture. And so when I found myself now as a Christian, I realized that there are certain things that I used to enjoy and just, you know, participate in when I wasn't a Christian that has to be changed now because it does not reflect what God says in his word and so this is where the clash comes in where you find Christianity and culture because culture often tends to represent what a society believes and practices on a whole while Christianity just basically represents what God believes and what his standards are and so we know in Mark chapter 7 the Bible says that when you neglect the commandments of God you have taken on the traditions of men the traditions of men practices of course this could possibly mean culture as well so if you're in a society where the culture is to go to carnivals and stuff like that but yet still the Bible is saying that you should not glory in the flesh and carnival literally means the glorifying of flesh do you see how the two can really clash with each other it's a serious thing that we're living in and so for somebody who was not grown as a Christian but you know was grown and taught the things the cultures of your the society that you're in you are now finding yourself like you're thrown off in a an island somewhere and you're just completely isolated because Christianity is telling you to reject all the things that you grew up knowing and being taught is socially acceptable. So where do we draw the line? Drawing the line simply reflects the difference between what God says and what society is saying. And so even though you may enjoy going to carnivals and doing all these things if you're at a genuine place in your heart where you want to do what the lord says and you're kind of saying okay but did god really say that i can't go here or did god really say that i can't practice doing this my number one advice to you is to visiting the word your itself because everything is laid out completely and this is why for some of you who are who may not be Christians you may find why certain Christians shy away from certain things or they completely don't participate in a particular conversation and it's because during that moment that particular Christian is practicing not giving in to the traditions of men it's not necessarily saying that I am judging you because you're a terrible person for going to do this or for listening to that or for finding that to be entertaining. It's more of saying, hey, I have committed my life to God and it's not pleasing to God for me to be participating in that because it doesn't represent his kingdom well and therefore I have to now withdraw myself and no longer participate. So where the topic of culture versus Christianity comes on, everything will tie you back 
to the word of God, what it says versus what society is saying. Here's a scripture from Deuteronomy 18 verse 9 which says, When you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. Once again, detestable things of those nations. How do you describe what detestable is? In this particular context, my advice is to compare what you see happening as a tradition or as a culture in your society and align that with what the Bible says. So for example, if you're in a society which glorifies sex and is encouraging you to just dash it out there without warning, what does the Bible say about sex and compare that and see, okay, culture is saying this, God is saying this. And then from there, you know, you can make a decision, okay, I'm going to stick with God or unfortunately, I kind of like the culture better. So this is kind of like how you'll find yourself weighing what society is saying is socially acceptable versus what God is saying is socially acceptable. Now these aren't easy. It is not easy to completely break the habit um, of something you enjoy doing, with, especially if you were participating in it before you became a Christian. Um, it's not easy to break out of a habit and to try to condition your mind to a whole new belief system and this is really why the bible says that no man can come to the father unless he himself draws him because god himself is the only one who can really turn your heart away from things like that we all know that a habit is hard to break but when you've grown up with years of people teaching you to do this people teaching you to do that it's not a one-stop um switch that's gonna happen as soon as you get dipped into the water you're always gonna have that fight coming back up that temptation coming back up it really takes god himself to really transform your heart and trust me that is something god is so good at you will find yourself like once you're genuine about your desire for righteousness about your desire for god to fill you eventually things that you considered socially acceptable and love participating in you suddenly don't have the desire to do it anymore it's not a case where somebody preached it into you it's more of a case where your relationship with god is building to a point where you are now becoming more like the new creation in which he created you to be and so soon that's why god says that when you pray out and dwell in me then he will dwell in you as well and that's why he can give you the desires of your heart because now his desires are becoming your desires so you kind of see how that aligns against what cultural norms are saying so i would say my advice to you of course is to take your relationship with the lord seriously if you find yourself in a place where you're struggling with you know balancing what culture is saying is to do and to going with culture versus what your christian values and morals are saying really tighten that relationship with god and just pour it to him let him know that you're struggling with this and that you want to become more like him you have to really spend time in god's presence and when I, you, I, and when people say spend time in the presence of God, they literally mean spending time in the presence of God. It's yes, there will be days where things get so busy and it's like a ten minutes, a fifteen minutes um, devotion. But sometimes when you really don't have anything else to do, it's best to really try to stretch it to at least a half an hour. Just really allowing yourself to be completely immersed in the things of God this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be praying for 30 minutes straight because not not everybody's at that place yet but this could mean that hey you prayed for 10 minutes you're worshiping for 20 and for the next couple of minutes you're just gonna watch a sermon or you're going to read a book that is helping you in a particular area of your Christian life doing these things eventually will widen your understanding of who God is and help you as his child now to fully fully understand the path of this whole Christian journey and so that's just one step like going after God letting him immerse himself into you the next part is where you have to know discipline yourself more than just the tongues and the rubber shaka more than just somebody preaching to you it's also about 
when you're on the road and you're hearing this or when there is a certain activity or something coming up or a conversation happening and you want to jump on that wagon because it looks so fun and it looks like yes you now have to be in that place where you can discipline yourself and stop yourself from saying hey okay no I should not be participating in this I should not be contributing to this because I know in my heart this is not what God wants for me to do this is what the world is saying this is what my society is saying this is what culture is and people should be told people will look down on you and say hey you're not embracing your country's culture hey you're discriminating and you're this and you're that and it's people like you while well, your country can't but they're just taking it very personal when you're just trying to please God and so you have to kind of remind yourself of what that motive is so remember I'm not saying that you're supposed to bash every single thing that your culture is telling you to do. What I'm saying is you have to weigh what culture is saying, that tradition of men. Weigh it against what God is saying and then you'll know whether or not this is something that's necessarily pleasing to God. I think it's the book of Amos or something like that where God says that you should use his word as your plumb line and this is why it's so important to constantly read your Bible. So you want to understand the Lord, you want to immerse yourself in him, you want to know what he's instructing you to do, you want to know what he says and who he says you are you also want to be disciplined you have to know when to stop yourself know what your triggers are know when to truly journey correct yourself from continuing to contribute into what society is saying you are to do and you have to immerse yourself and know his word and know how to weigh that against what he's saying old habits die hard and so these are things that will take some time um, to come to full perfection I don't really like saying perfection because nobody truly is perfect we all have our short days and there'll be good days and there'll be bad days there'll be good weeks there'll be bad weeks you could be on a roll for an entire month not participating in this not going after that and then something happens the next month and it throws you off and you find yourself back at that place and you have to really continue trying to push yourself out of it but it's it's okay because the righteous man falls seven times it's about getting back up that is super super important so it's not like something that's gonna be fixed tomorrow um, like I said it's years that you were being taught to accept every single thing that culture is saying is socially correct so now suddenly transition into Christianity it really just take the power of God to transform you but it also needs to have work be done on your part so culture versus Christianity it's a very sticky situation it can sometimes be very sensitive and not everybody will see it in the way in which I see it or another Christian may see it but one thing I want you to remember is that you your motive for this is not to bash your country or to bash the people in your country your motive behind it should be to please God so you're making the choice to not contribute or to not participate in what your culture or this area of what your culture is saying you to do or to accept because you know according to what God says that's not pleasing to him and this is why we are known to be set apart this is why God says that we are different this is why God says come out from among them because you're a different set of people people should look at you and can tell okay this person is there's something different about this person people should look at you and can tell and I'm not just talking about um, the so the physical space like appearance I'm not talking about what you wear I'm not talking about how you talk um, I'm talking about just your your entire character your entire personality you as a person right especially when no one else is looking at you and it's your family your family members should look at you at home and can tell something is different with you something has changed something you can't look like everybody else revel in what everybody else is reveling in and then accept, expect that you are pleasing God when you're doing every single thing that he has instructed us not to do that's just the reality of what life is of what Christianity is all about so Christianity versus culture I don't think they would necessarily be merged together um, so long as culture remains as how it is 
today I can definitely say that there are ways in which Christianity can enhance culture and there is there's ways in which culture can enhance Christianity so there are ways that can kind of tie in into the two but they'll still forever be completely separate because culture involves the tradition of men what men think are socially acceptable acceptable to them as a people versus what God thinks or God instructs is acceptable to his people and to him so that's it for today's video guys i really wanted to just talk a little bit about culture versus christianity because especially for us as young people i know it's not easy it really isn't easy to just continue to maneuver through life and you know sometimes you feel like you're being left out because you know the wave is going that way and you just feel like you're kind of isolated over there but you're not alone all of us have been through it all of us are still going through it all of us have our struggles but we have to really find that place where we can comfort ourselves with the Lord and be at peace with this new life in which we have chosen to accept and know that it's for our good at the end of the day because when you really really think about it when you choose not to jump into sexual activities like what um the world is saying you're to do you're saving yourself from a whole world of hurt that you could possibly get by inappropriately delving into that whole practice so that is just one example um that i'm bringing up to kind of hopefully get the message across so yeah Thank you so much for watching. If you have anything you'd like to say or contribute or ask more on this topic of culture versus Christianity, then feel free to comment down below and let me know what you have to say or ask. If you're new to my channel and you'd like to see more Christian content, faith-based content, then feel free to subscribe down below. Turn on my notifications because I'm enjoying going live lately and the only way to know if I'm live is if you have my notifications on. So please do turn them on <laughs> thank you guys for watching once again this is chanella and i'm now tuning out from kingston jamaica enjoy your evening or day or morning whenever you're watching this video <laughs> bye